This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. You know, improvement doesn't just happen when you bring in new names to your team. Improvement can happen within the guys that you already have on the team. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What Browns players can improve themselves? What is the Browns self-improvement guide for this year? What needs to get better? Who needs to get better? Who needs to improve in exactly what areas and what statistically will indicate if these guys have gotten better in that area? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about just that thing. So the first thing off the board that I want to talk about that was bad last year. And look, there are reasons why some of these numbers were bad obvious glaring giant reasons why these things were bad injuries is usually what it comes down to when we're talking about the 2024 Browns but we're also talking about a team that won 11 games with 26 percent of the salary cap on IR so obviously there's some potential there first things first the catch percentage per target has to be better. The Browns were sitting at 59.5. A team like the Cincinnati Bengals that has great wide receivers or the 49ers are at 70% of targets caught. I don't think the Browns have to be that high, but I do think you need to be at 65 like you need to be in that average range of catching the targets that are given to you. Now, obviously, the big reason why this happened, because you started five quarterbacks. And starting five quarterbacks does more damage than just the quarterback position. It does damage to the offensive line. It does a lot of damage to your wide receivers. Five quarterbacks means five different times at the very least where guys had to go in and out the lineup and wide receivers had to get used to a new quarterback. But that's not even the, the, the long of it, right? The Browns didn't just start five quarterbacks for because of necessity, one, because they chose to. They changed out the starting quarterback a bunch. So they started the year with Watson. Then Watson got hurt. Then they put in DTR. Then they went to the bye week and they put in PJ Walker. And then they went back to Deshaun Watson. And then they went back to PJ Walker. And then they went back to Deshaun Watson. And then they went back to DTR. And they went from DTR to Joe Flacco. And went from Joe Flacco to not Kyle Trask, but they went to Jeff Driscoll. That's who they went to. Jeff Driscoll. Nine quarterback changes in one season is going to wreak havoc on your wide receiver catch percentage. If they keep it to one or two quarterback changes this year, that number will go up to 65. But the bottom line is that number needs to go up to 65. I have my projections for what I expect the Browns room to do. And between David and Joku, Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore, I have about 3,500 receiving yards between the four of those guys. And honestly, I expect Elijah Moore to be a little bit more efficient. So maybe 3,600 uh, receiving yards. In order to get to those numbers, in order to be the offense that they want to be, they got to be able to catch the balls that are thrown to them. Those balls have to be catchable from a quarterback standpoint. And the wide receivers have to catch what's catchable. It's not just a, oh, the wide receivers sucked. That's why the catch percentage was down. When your catch percentage is 59.9, it's reflective of wide receivers being in a terrible situation and your quarterbacks just not putting the ball where it needs to on a consistent basis. 
and for the most part, if we're talking about what happened last year with the Browns, that's what happened. Nine quarterback changes within the season. It's amazing they won 11 games last year, but if they want to build on top of that, that's one of the key numbers they have to get down. Another number, which I don't usually focus on on this channel, but I think I am going to focus on just a little bit more, um, is completion percentage, and that's because the Browns had the lowest com- completion percentage in the NFL. Now, I'm not one of these people who thinks like you need to have like a 70% completion percentage or anything like that, or uses completion percentage as a measure of accuracy. I don't think it's a good measure of that. But what I do think completion percentage is a good measure of is completions. And this Browns team needed to complete more passes last year, right? Needed to get more yardage on first down. Um, Needed to get those five yards just a little bit easier last year than it was. And they were dead last in completion percentage. Um, That needs to jump up to about league average. Once you get to league average, you can be as productive as you want. Um, I don't really care once you get to league average, but the completion percentage Definitely needs to get the league average. And that can be helped from the coaching staff. That can be helped from the wide receiving room. And that can be helped from, obviously, the quarterback room. I think it's a joint collaboration. That's why Ken Dorsey's here. That's why Deshaun Watson's here. That's why you bring in an extra hand like Jerry Judy to make sure that these numbers go up. And if they do go up, you're going to be put in a good spot. Jerry Judy is one of those interesting names that continues to pop up here because the contract is of a 900-yard wide receiver. Right, I think the Browns signed Jerry Judy with the thinking that, hey, we will pay him today as if he were a 900 to low 1,000-yard receiver. So far in his career, he's been an 800 to 900-yard receiver. Now, some of his numbers suggest that if he just got more targets, he would be a thousand yard receiver, but he hasn't put together in a thousand yard season, despite coming very, very close two years ago. 14 yards per t- target. If he gets like 100 targets, obviously he gets to wherever he is. I mean, not 14 yards per target, 14 yards per reception. If he gets to a certain amount of receptions, then he would get over a thousand yards. It's more of a waiting game than anything. So the Browns thought process with their contract is we will pay him as a 900 to 1000 yard receiver. Right now he's a 800 to 900 yard receiver. If he has a slight improvement, we will be paying regular value for a second wide receiver and we'll be getting good production for a second wide receiver. If he plays below that, then yes, you overpaid for a receiver, but slightly. Right. It's a slight overpay. You're getting 800 yards out of somebody you're paying to get 900 to a thousand. Right. So, okay, slight overpay. The upside to this deal is that if he does blossom, if this is the right situation, if it was so toxic in Denver, then this contract becomes a bargain similar to David and Joku. Because now you're getting number one wide receiver money, which is usually, I mean, number one wide receiver production, which is usually along the realm of like 25 to $28 million a year for 17 a year. So you come out pretty good on that. Right now, Jerry Judy's an 800 yard receiver. That contract says we're paying him like a 900 to 1,000 yard receiver. They're betting on him to make that slight jump. If he makes that slight jump, they're fine. If he makes a bigger jump, they're sitting in the green. If he doesn't make a jump, they're not. It's not that bad of an overpay. It's just a slight overpay. So that's why I thought the thought process was with Jerry Judy and his production does kind of justify that bet on him. I get that people are down on him because Mark's, uh, Mark Schlereth and Steve Smith don't like him, but they didn't like him in that situation that he was in in Baltimore. This is a new situation. Let's see how he does in a new situation before we let what happened in his last stop condemn him in a new stop, especially for somebody that's 25 years old. But catch percentage across the board for wide receivers, it just needs to go up. Can't be at 59.5% again. Has to be at league average. Once you get to league average, I think you have the talent to be really good, but you need to get league average right there. And I think most of that jump in percentages when it comes to catch percentage is going to come from Elijah Moore. Um, His catch percentages last year were awful. Um, and his yards per target were pretty low. I think it was like an 11, and his catch percentage wasn't great. So I think he just did not have a great start to the year 
Um, and I think if he's used better, if he's going to be able to get open a little bit easier, I think he will have less targets, but more production and more efficient production because I think he's better when he's in a role to kind of be a gadget more than like a one or a two receiver, if that makes sense. Um, and this Browns offense, he's going to be a third, fourth option. And I think that's a perfect role for Elijah Moore. There's going to be some games where he's going to be utilized very little. There are going to be some games where matchups dictate that he's going to be utilized a ton. But I see him being kind of like that that secret weapon that the Browns kind of keep in the tank um, and use when needed, right, um, at wide receiver and I think that's going to be worth about – you want that to be worth about six, 700 yards. Uh, so that's what they need from a wide receiving standpoint. I think that's one of the biggest areas of self-improvement. Defensively, I mean, I think so much of the road stuff that people say about the Cleveland Browns ignores how often this offense – put points on the defense for the defense um, and how that really inflated some of those road numbers. Like if you look at the playoff game, it's a perfect example of that. 14 of those points were given up by Joe Flacco. And once Joe Flacco gave up those 14 points, really changed the tone of the game. Um, and there was another what fourth down conversion that failed that really just killed the tone of the game. Some of those points, like 14 of the points in the first Houston game were when the backups were in. Like, and then you also count all of the 30 points from the Cincinnati game when none of the starters played. I think the road stuff is a bit overblown. Um, and I think that road stuff will get better in year two of this defense because in year two, your safeties, your secondary, your zone coverage elements, that's going to get a lot better. And I think when the Browns struggled was when it came down to their secondary more often or when it came down to the secondary having to play zone. I think that's where they struggled. I think they'll be much better in that um, this year in the second year of Joe, not Joe, it's Jim Schwartz's system. Um, and I think that will be a big improvement. Offensive line wise, I think where they need to be improved is just consistency. I think the talent's there to be solid enough. I know people don't like Jet Wills, but Jet Wills certainly has everything he needs to and has done it before to be good enough at that left tackle position, especially if he has good help there. You already know right tackle's in a really good spot. You have Joe Batonio, who's a fringe Hall of Famer in my eyes at left guard. You have Wyatt Teller, who's an all-pro level player, and you have Mate Ethan Posick, who is a Pro Bowl level player. What I would love to see from the offensive line is just consistency, and I think a lot of this stuff that I'm complaining about today goes hand in hand with help. Right. For the Browns to self-improve, I think it's going to take them being healthy um, because if you're healthy on the offensive line, the play will be much more consistent. If you're healthy at quarterback, I think the catch percentage is naturally going to be up for those wide receivers. And if you're healthy at wide receiver, I think you're going to get better and more efficient production from the quarterback position. So health is really where the big improvement needs to be for this team. This is a team that did not get lucky last year. I hear this take that the Browns were lucky last year. The Browns had 26% of their salary cap on injured reserve, and they led the league in turnovers. They were the most unlucky team in the NFL, but they won games last year because their defense was able to fight bad luck. They were that good. And if that defense just gets a little bit less adversity, in 2024, they can go all the way. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have an even better night. Peace.